Welcome back to another episode of Let's Chat Podcast, y'all. I am your host, Jojo. And I'm Tyra. Ooh. <laughs> episode 100. Wow. For those of you who can't see, we do have balloons behind us that are just barely making it. <laughs> They're cute, though. I can't tell if they're backwards or not. Like, you yeah. know, we just put them up is right. It, is it? I don't know. <laughs> so no, if you see babe, this. we have to know. If you see this and, no, and this shit is backwards, like, it's not my fault. No, we're going to. Then we'll flip it. No, can we flip the video? It's right because it's showing right here. That is right. Ah, uh, you scaring me. I'm scaring you. How you think I feel? <laughs> no, I'm gonna try blaming on and, me. Like you seeing, and, the, you seeing the same thing dumb, I'm seeing. Dumb and dumber. You dumb. seeing the same thing I'm seeing, and you all, all like I'm scaring you. So you would have the whole time without noticing. <laughs> no, I, I honestly would have. But then I mean, you just flip it. If that was the flip case, flip what the like camera? We, no, we would have flipped the video. How the hell do you With do that, the, <laughs> guys? You know what I'm talking about. You could flip a video. Well, this is news to me. Inverse, like you, when you invert it, you could invert something. Interesting. I'll show you how to do it later. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, episode 100, yo, I cannot believe that we've done this 100 times. I mean, if we count the first times we when we started and so, we fucked up, it really, you it's, know. It was 101. It's, it's 101. We should have hit 100 a long time ago. I'm going to keep saying that. But but why does it matter? <laughs> it doesn't. It really doesn't at all. I'm just saying, you know, we would have I mean, did this a long time ago. We made it this far. There's definitely some stats out there that tell you what episode people get to in podcasts. And a lot don't make it to 100. No, that's facts. Like, they don't make it past... It really depends on if they record bi-weekly or every week. Uh-huh. But they don't make it past, like, the first six months to a year, which, yeah. I don't know, what's that? I You drop a new one every week, that's maybe 50 or so. Uh-huh. So, yeah, we're here. We made it. And we're on year three, really. So, time is flying, but I still feel like we just started. So crazy. But nonetheless, I'm grateful to be here. And to give you guys this episode, relax. It's nothing juicy. Be good, relax. <laughs> it's nothing crazy. Nothing we, crazy, know? though. Nothing, not too crazy. Um, however, a couple announcements to make. We will be doing, I don't want to say a meet and greet because that's not the sole purpose of like us popping out. Like we plan on being in Jersey City, Porta to be exact. Those who know, know. And those who don't, Google. Um, but yeah, we chose to basically like just celebrate. It's, it's our little celebratory, you know, hundredth episode, um, gathering. And obviously we want to, you guys to join and be a part of it because you've been a part of it up until this point. So for those of you who are able to make it and are in the area, um, hopefully the day works. We're going with what friday the 26th yeah friday the 26th in porta if you're from jersey or jersey city then you know that right next to porta is uh 626 which is a gay club so a lot of people were like so i'm guessing you're going to 626 Eh, no maybe we'll go there afterwards but i feel like we want to get we want to be somewhere that's like less hectic and if you've been to 626 it is so loud in there and so crowded like there's no way we can even have a conversation or anything because there's just so much going on. Yeah, it does have a rooftop though, and it's like opened up already. Maybe we'll go to a rooftop. I don't know, but I've only been there twice, so I don't even know that they keep the rooftops open for night. Events. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, we'll we'll ask, but we'll definitely Porta. swing by to six two six. Yeah, but Porta was mm-hmm. the selection. I've been to Porta twice as well. I like it. It's nice. They always play good music. You're able to get a drink at the bar. Yeah, it's um, like chill. It's nothing crazy. Like, and it's it has big enough to and, like right and, hold people dance wise mm-hmm. and just social wise. So I think yeah. that's a good. And there's multiple floors. There's also a rooftop there. Don't know if it's open, but if you get there early enough, like they serve really good pizza. Um, and there's a lot of places on that block. Like for those who aren't in the area. It's like on Grove Street. So if you're from New York, you can also take the path into Grove Street. 
Um, and there's so many other like restaurants and bars in the area. So like definitely recommend like checking it out early um, if you have some time or whatever. But the time is not set. We just know it's going to be Friday night. Um, we know people work and shit, but catch yeah. me outside Friday night. We hope that we see you guys there. Yes, 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 yes. Um, all right. And then the other thing that we want to talk about was if you've been listening to this podcast and you are like an OG from the beginning, back, 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 back then, we try to do like a queer trip with us and with you guys. And the way that it worked is that um, you guys took a survey and then we had to get a certain number of responses from there, you guys, um, like we picked the top spot, the most popular location, which was going to be Costa Rica. Um, and then from there, people put down their deposit and like you're set to go to this trip with us. It didn't end up working out because not enough people signed up for it. So we were like, all right, whatever. It just wasn't meant to be. It is what it is. We probably needed like three more people for it to be solidified. Yeah. Um, so we were very, very close. So they contacted us again and we were like, you know what? Let's give it another chance. It doesn't hurt to try. Anybody could come, honestly. Like anybody obviously who supports us, listens to the podcast. Um and yeah, we're gonna put a link in our bio. It's gonna be in the the description of this episode in the link in our bio on our all of all of our social media channels. And it's basically gonna ask you guys a few questions about like your budget where you would like to go and things like that. Um, some things that I do want to know is that <clears throat> you would, like there's things that it comes with, obviously, like um, food and like, um, lo- uh, uh, what you call it, hotel, I came and talk. Mm-hmm. The food, hotel, resort or whatever, and then like activities and all of that. But one thing it doesn't cover is flights. So I just want to make that clear to everybody because like we also want to make it like affordable because times are rough you know like times are rough and we ask them questions about like are there payment plans how does it work they told us there are payment plans that you could pay monthly and you could obviously just pay monthly and then even after the trip you could continue paying if you like didn't pay it off um so it's also like an option for you guys and yeah one thing about us, you know, we are always trying to vacation. Yeah. So, um, obviously, that's a real dope opportunity. As she said, we didn't get to do that uh, with the first opportunity we had with planning this, um, well, the trip at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, we think, like, why not give it a try and see, you know, who's willing to take the risk? Yeah. Um, but we're good. We have a good time all the time, so it's like, why not share that with other people? And for all we know, we might have a great time with other people. Right. So watch out for that bio. Take the survey at the very least. Mm-hmm. And um, just keep up. Where do you want to go? Where do I want to go? I will go to Costa Rica again. Mm-hmm. Um, DR. I haven't been to DR. Mm-hmm. Like, I went for, like, a wedding, but... I feel like that didn't really count because yeah. we were just. Right. Um, I would say I haven't been to PR in a long time. These are, I know, like, I feel like when people think vacation and, mm-hmm. and like, if I'm going to spend money, like, I'm going to, I want to go somewhere. Fa- but let's be real. Flights are crazy. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it, it costs a grip to go to Greece. Of course, mm-hmm. Greece is on my list, but like, that's later down the yeah, line. Yeah, that, that would be too expensive, like a little too pricey. Yeah. So things like Greece and Italy and all those things. <laughs> Of course we want to go there, but we want to be realistic and we want to be considerate of not only our budget, but, you know, y'all budget. Right. So, you know, when doing the survey, I would just say, you know, be a little, how you say it, Cop- budget friendly. Budget friendly. Yeah. Um, but there is like a max, like I, not a max, but we asked like, what is the minimum that people could spend? They said like anywhere from like 18, so 1,800 to 2,000. Um, and like I said, it comes with... Which is with, probably what you'll spend regular on... Yeah. A vacation with Yeah, na- nowadays. Yeah, things, yeah, now. Things are crazy. Right, right, right. Um, but I would want to go... Yeah, I like... I definitely like, um, Costa Rica. We went there before. Loved it. Um, I feel like there was things that we didn't get to do. Yeah. And I want to go back and do it. And the way it works is that you guys 
can do the excursions, but if you guys don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Yeah. Um, Because we know some people like to chill, be by the pool and all of that. And some people like to go out and like go to all the excursions. So mm. really up to you. Um, I would want to go to Mexico. Yeah. Every fact, time I, I go, go to Mexico, Mexico, I have a good time. Every time I go to Mexico. Um, You're like every time. How many times did you go to Mexico? I went to Mexico twice. Mm, one of which you don't remember. What are you talking about? I went with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was the second time, no? And then the other time when I went with my friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That you passed out? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was too crazy. Um, but very fun. And I want to go to Tulum, though. I don't know if that's like an option. but It was an option. Oh, it was? It was. The only thing that I don't like about it is that you have to drive far from the airport to the actual place. But that's something that we will also provide, like um, transportation and things like that. Um, Mexico or... I don't know. Honestly, anywhere. Like, I feel like every time you go somewhere, I'm I'm a big... Like, it's never the same experience. It's never the same experience, and I'm all about experiences. So, like, I feel like I'll have a good time, honestly, anywhere. Mm-hmm. I would love to go to Greece, but that's, like, way too expensive. Um, that's in but, another life. <laughs> but, yeah, if you guys are interested, uh, feel free to do the survey. Um, we need a lot of people to complete the survey. So if you guys can even just do us the favor, just entertain it for a little bit um, and, <laughs> and submit some in- information. Um, yeah, doing yeah. the survey doesn't like lock you in and oh, make no, it yeah, no. that you're absolutely going, you know, mm-hmm. it's just the starting point. Um, right. But yeah, come on down. Let's get to know each other and have a little fun around the world. You feel me? You right. know, come make friends, come with your partner, come with your friends, right. you know? And it's like, for queer people, it's already hard for us to like go out and travel and be safe. And mm-hmm. I feel like if we're in a group, like we're good because it's like we're together. We have each other's back. Like there's going to be someone who's actually going to be guiding us around. So we're not like, oh, out, no. it's not just going to be me and Jojo. It's just out here willy nilly trying to figure it out. Like there's going to be someone there answering questions and things like that. I even asked about dietary restrictions <laughs> Because I was like, yeah, your girl can be eating nothing crazy. Like, I need some gluten-free options or, like, something that is just simple. And they said that they, they'll have that, apparently. Um, if you're vegan, I'm sure that they'll have some options for, for you as well or vegetarian. The list must go on. Um, but, yeah, so there's that. Yeah. All right. So in today's episode, we're going to go over... What they don't tell you about breakups. Tan, tan, tan. Good Lord. <laughs> I've seen, it's, it always comes down to I've seen a TikTok. Don't judge me. But somebody was like talking about, you know, I guess they were experiencing a breakup and it came up like things that people don't tell you or like mm-hmm. that I didn't know until mm-hmm. going through the experience. And I'm like, that's valid. A lot of things. Yeah, but like, obviously, it isn't until you actually experience those things that you're like, oh shit, like, that's for real. Or, cause you know, naturally, we don't listen when people tell us things. You know, when yeah. people are telling us things for our good, we don't listen. Mm-hmm. We have to learn the hard way. Mm-hmm. So, if you know, you don't wish to learn here, then have fun learning the hard way. I mean, everyone has to learn one day. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly. And and it's different for everybody. So like here, uh-huh. I've experienced being broken up with. You've been the breaker upper. But this is the thing. So there is the thing about okay, today's yes, episode. Yes, tell me please. It doesn't matter who broke up with who. Okay? Okay. Like but the experience st- is different. The experience is different, but it's also still the same. Because just because the person broke up with you doesn't mean that that like they're not experiencing like grieving. Right, and that's mm-hmm. what I want to ask. Yeah, I'm not throwing shade at you because oh. you're the breaker upper, Miss. I do. Don't get defensive. <laughs> you know, relax. I'm just saying you've been in a position to where you have broken up uh-huh. with people, and yeah. obviously some of them like just because you're in a position of, you know, ending the relationship mm-hmm. doesn't mean that it hurts less. Less. Mm-hmm. I mean, it definitely doesn't hurt as much, but it hurts. Mm-hmm. So I want. <laughs> I'm over here talking shit. No, no, no. Because you want to know what? Last episode, we asked that question where it was like, "Oh, 
um something what the fuck was that question some question about like has anybody ever told you something and it like stuck with you Uh, or whatever like someone said i don't love you yeah yeah and and she asked the whole well has someone ever said like i don't love you anymore and i was like yeah oh i've never said that to anybody but it was the it was the laughing she laughed like oh (laughs) like kind of like it couldn't be me like girl no 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 but but i was like yeah like but i'm not gonna act like it don't hurt because that shit fucking hurt like i'm not one to cover up like i can i can act like i don't give a fuck but like for what? If it hurt, it hurt. Like, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, <laughs> but I just wanted to say, like, you know, you being on the other fence of that, mm-hmm. like, what is your experience? Because obviously, as a person being broken up with, it's I feel like normal to think like, oh, well, you don't care. How mm-hmm. could you have loved me in these moments, mm-hmm. or you know, had this whole life and idea painted out to me about our relationship and now all of a sudden we've reached a day where you don't love me mm-hmm. or you don't want to be with me like I think like you know it's not I don't want to say natural but we're obviously it's gonna fuck with the person that's being broken up with you yeah. know mentally it's just like oh well why yeah. all this time you know yeah I mean I feel like when when someone initiates the breakup I don't think it's like for the most part. I don't think people just wake up and are like, I don't, I don't want to be with this person anymore. It's yeah. definitely something that they think about over time, like probably months, weeks, or whatever, like where they're thinking about it and just having like hesitations and like what ifs and things like that. Because I think it's something that you think about and it, like you stress over it because it's like. To bring that up, like, it's, like, it's a scary thing because you never know how the person's going to react. You don't even know how how you're going to bring it up. Like, you don't know how the conversation's going to go. Like, people people get petty. Like, Mm -hmm. people get hurt. People get upset. Like, I just feel like it's not easy. So, like, in in a situation where you initiated a breakup... Mm -hmm. Did you fear, like, obviously you're going through a bunch of, you know, thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, it doesn't just happen overnight. It's like, as time goes on and then you obviously hit a point to where you're just like, I just got to do it. Mm -hmm. But like, do you ever fear that you like, you regret that decision? No. Because I'm I'm different. Like, I feel... (laughs) She's different. <laughs> but I mean it. Like, I feel like when I make a decision, I'm very, like, firm on it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, I don't make decisions on willy-nilly. Like, I, but I'm also a very, like, hesitant person. That's mm-hmm. why I'm like that. Because it's like, I'm very hesitant. So I really have to, like, think and process it and just a, a lot of thinking, really. So it's not something that I would So, like, like, in the last two situations that you were in, how mm-hmm. long did it take? I mean, you chose to to like break up yeah in those last two times Mm -hmm. so what like how long do you feel like you sat on that till you decided to finally break up i think um i'm trying to think like which ones you're referring to um the most recent ones because we're not going all the way back to high school and this man and that man i'm not talking about high school but like um the last relationship i was with was a guy Oh, plot twist. (laughs) Plot twist, plot twist, plot twist. That was like years ago. When was this? Like 2008. Yeah, but the two girls that you was just with, was that not before me? Yeah, but- Okay, so uh, those were- But one of them I wouldn't really even consider. I don't- (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so that was a a situationship. Yeah, that was a situationship. Not to her, but to you. Okay. (laughs) But the the first girl that you was with, Uh y'all was in a relationship. Kind of. No, you were in a relationship. <laughs> Don't kind of like. Now she wants to start lying. Like, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, that was a lot of back and forth. So that's how I knew it was like, like the breaking like break up. up oh, yeah, break, break up. up. Like it's like. So oh like, my what gosh. made you entertain that if you would have never entertained that before? Because it was like the first girl that I dated. Okay. So it was just like a lot of feelings. So like, how she butter you up? They come back in. Um. They really just try to be friends with you. Friends. This is why I can't with the friends thing, because then they cross your boundaries. Yeah, but you took her back. Yeah, I know. (laughs) (laughs) 
How many times did that happen? Um, a couple times. I okay. never did the breakup and makeup thing like back and forth. Like that is uh-huh. such, I mean, I feel like everybody's been like, has had that phase and I feel like that's that, you know, high school shit, but I didn't date in high school until like my senior year. And mm-hmm. even then I didn't try that, that breakup and makeup shit. No, mm-hmm. the, I had the one breakup and we got back together and then the official breakup happened. Yeah. But it was never like the on and off. We need a break. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It was too much, honestly. So, yeah, the, that whole breaking up, making up thing, it, you get tired of it. All right. I want to go over this article that I found, and it's called, Do Lesbians Break Up? Do Lesbian Breakups Really Hit Harder? And it's from this website called Refinery29. And this is what it says. It, it had some really interesting points that I was like, this is very true. It says, women can quite easily enmesh in relationships. And then they say, I'm generalizing, obviously, but your partner can very easily become your family and best friend too. I see straight couples and they only have nights out with their separate gendered friend groups and are really quite separate entities. I think it's fairly stereotypical for women to become each other's everything very quickly, which makes it hard to pull away. You're not just leaving your partner behind. You're, you're leaving your whole support system, family, and way of life. So I remember we talked about this before where we were like, yeah, lesbian breakups are harder. And we posted a video on social media and then people were like, all breakups are hard. Like it's not mm-hmm. just lesbian breakups. But I feel like there's so, it's like so much to, I guess, try to explain to someone who really just doesn't see your point of view. Um but it is true. Like, I feel like they are your partner and your best friend and you guys have the same friend group. And like you guys, I mean, for me and you, like we, we kind of have different friend groups and sometimes you go out with your friends and I go out with my friends and then sometimes we come together. But I feel like for the most part, I do see a lot of queer couples that they do everything together. They have the same friend groups. Like it's like, they're always together. And then with straight couples, like they said, a woman goes out with their friends and then a man goes out with their friends. Like they'll have a girl's night or a boy's night. And I feel like we don't separate that. So that person literally becomes your world. <clears throat> Another thing that they mentioned were was, according to Nicholas Rose, a psychotherapist working particularly with people in queer relationships, it is common for queer people to feel distant from their families during a breakup due to the shame or lack of lack of acceptance. Plus, if your own family does not accept your sexuality, then you might have formed a strong bond with your partners, only to lose that when you break up too, he adds. It might be that queer women don't have a strong network of other queer women who they can talk to, while while men in same-sex relationships tend to have a bigger pool of literature, information, and media to call upon. And when I read this, it made me think about like the first girl that I talked to and I try to think about like why, um, like why was it so hard for me? Like why was it so dramatic? And like, I just didn't understand. But then I remember like I literally have no, I, I had nobody to talk to about this. Like I did have some friends, but I feel like they didn't really even understand. That's why I'm not friends with them anymore. Um my sisters didn't know, like my family didn't know, like the two best friends that I have now, one of them kind of knew. Um, but I was just like, so busy. Like we were, we are, our, our schedules were so opposite. Um, so I really had no one to talk to about it. Nobody. So like, imagine you're going through like a hard time and you just can't talk to nobody about it. It's like, you just look depressed. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, nothing. You know, because it's like nobody knows that you're out. Hmm. So it's like imagine you're going through a breakup and then you also have to come out at the same time. Like I was like, I'm not doing that. I was like, I'm not doing that. Um, It was too much. Um, The last thing he says was it it begins to feel understandable that statistics show that lesbian marriages above heterosexual marriages and gay marriages end up in the highest divorce rates. Articles online point to old stereotypes as a potential reason for this, that lesbians move in with each other too quickly and that we're already going out with our next partner 
while we are still going out with the last person. But even if the stereotypes are true of some lesbians, do they have to be a bad thing? Why wait around to commit? Question mark. Queer people have never followed expected timelines of when we should get married or have kids, for example, because we haven't traditionally been given access to them. The lesbian U-Haul stereotype of moving in with a partner quickly could just be another example of us finding our own way of doing things. But yeah, I really like that article because I feel like it kind of explains like why we think that lesbian breakups are harder. It's a lot. That part. I had a list of like things that nobody tells you about breakups. Number one, stop being hard on yourself. I feel like a lot of the times people blame themselves, especially if they were the one who like got broken up with. Um, and they start thinking about like, oh, what could I have done differently? Or what did I do wrong? Or maybe there's something wrong with me or the, or you just start blaming that person. Like they're the problem. Like they don't know what they want. And I feel like, um, it's, everyone's going to have their own different story. Yeah. Like everyone's going to have their own different point of view. Um, and you just like both of you guys, I don't know. It was like. You you guys could have both been wrong in, in the relationship. Yeah. there's Like, people are always looking for one person to blame. And I think that we're all guilty of that even with public, like, influencers that are in relationships that have that social, like, that couple social media thing going on. And, like, these couples come out and say that they're broken up and everybody's, like, in shock. And then all these speculations go around like, oh, well, somebody must have cheated. Somebody must have did this. Somebody must have did that. Oh, I could tell this person wasn't happy. And oh, they just weren't good together, blah, blah, blah. Like, you don't know what happened. Stop making, you know, up stories and speculations. Like, some people literally do just break up on mutual terms in realizing right. that, you know, some people grow apart and, and they're not growing together. Some people need space to figure out their own personal Mm -hmm. you know stuff and like individuality like there's so many reasons to why people could break up that it doesn't have to be off something negative Mm -hmm. um but i don't know you know if you guys follow me on tiktok or whatever but i did post a video saying like and this is because like not even from my own experience but also you know i've had some friends within the last year or so experience you know, their breakups. And it makes me sad because like, I know in my process, all the things that I went through and like all the emotions that I felt and the thoughts, like everything that you go through, it's like, it's a lot to like take down and and to get through. Like the healing process for me was really long and not that everybody's healing process is the same, but you know, we blame ourselves very heavily in that, in that time. Um, and in a time where you're so vulnerable and like so hurt, you know, you it's kind of hard to know if you have a support system or not. And the last thing you need to do is be your own enemy. You, you understand? So mm-hmm. it's like you have to be like your support system. Mm-hmm. And with saying that, I posted a video saying like, you know, it's not that, you know, your ex-partner found someone better or is looking for someone better, you know. It's just that they found someone who is best for them in their journey right now. You know, whatever journey they're going through or whatever it is that they're seeking, like, they just have to find someone that works for them. And it's okay that, like, you didn't work out with them. That just means now it's your turn to find someone who works best for you Mm -hmm. and that should be a part of your journey because Mm -hmm. you guys are on the same path. Right. And it's funny you say that. I was thinking about the other day, like, I... I noticed also with, like, in queer relationships, when I had cut things off with that girl, right, um, it was a weird situation because it was, like, they were still trying to, like, be with me, but then I knew that they were also trying to be with somebody else. Mm-hmm. Don't try to play me. <laughs> and that's and that's why. But and like, that's what pissed me off, too. Do you also feel like, in that sense, that they were trying to be with you while also trying to be with someone else to make it seem like to you that they were trying. 
I, I honestly, and that you just weren't giving them the chance to try. I honestly and be the better. I honestly don't know, but like people tend to do that a lot, and I just feel like I'm sorry, I can't support it. Like the whole like dating, like they already dating someone while you're in a like in a like trying to break things off with someone or like still like you need some time like give it a gap at least because i feel like you can't just be jumping and i mean it's a stereotype yeah but it's also like something true that i see a lot i'm like how 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 what's a good time frame you think that makes it appropriate enough for you to be entertaining someone else after serious relationship i think it depends on like the circumstance right Mm -hmm. like i feel like let's say you got broken up with right then, like, five days later, your friends are like, let's go to the bar, let's have some drinks, you know, whatever. Like, ch- trying to cheer you up and shit. If you get drunk and you meet somebody there, it's just, that's just for fun. Like, that's just, you, you're, you're, you're living your life. You're drunk. And you know that this person isn't going to, you're not even going to entertain this person later on. Like, this is just for the night. Mm-hmm. Shit like that, I'm like, whatever. But, like, if you're intentionally going on dates and doing all of that, I don't know how, how y'all do it. Because... I mean, at least for me, I feel like you just need, like, some detox. Mm-hmm. You need, like, to reflect and just, like, kind of be by yourself for a little bit just to, like, I don't know, like, just detach, I guess. Yeah. Number two, allow yourself to feel. Um, there's some people that really try to be, like, hardcore, and I'm like that sometimes. <laughs> there's some people that really be fronting, like, you know, like, they're telling you, they're going through a breakup, but they're just, like, whatever about it. Like, it's, like, no, girl. Like, you could cry. Like, it's okay. Like, you could cry. You could scream. Whatever it is that's going to make you kind of, like, feel it out, you got to do that. And I feel like sometimes people people have their own way of, like, grieving, right? Like, some people will sit in bed and eat ice cream and watch sad movies and cry. I think that's totally fine. Some people go to the gym OD, run like five miles on some wild shit. That's fine too. Mm-hmm. And I think anything of too much is going to be bad for you. So if you're going to keep crying and eating ice cream, that's going to be bad for you. Like you can't, I feel like there has to be like a cutoff point where you're like, all right, enough is enough. I've done, I've done the crying. I've done all of that. I'm, I've been running five miles a day. Like it's like, you got to chill because then you're you're hurting yourself physically when you're already hurt mentally. And emotionally. So, right. Like, uh, like uh, some people are like, yeah, don't, like, don't smoke and don't drink. Like, sometimes people need a little drink and that's fine. But if you start drinking every damn day or every weekend, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. And you got to cut it out. Like, maybe once or twice. Okay. But, you know, like, some people take it overboard. That's why I said too much of something, too much of anything is a bad thing. Like, even the working out thing. Like, you could hurt yourself. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's it. So what do you feel like your process is in that? My process? Um, I feel like I try to keep myself busy. Work. I work OD. Yeah. I'll work 24 seven. Yeah. Literally. (laughs) Like, sign me up. Overtime, what, what, what? She already works so much. I already work like crazy, but. I can only imagine. Uh, yeah. Or like, I'll go to the gym or like, I feel like I, I just try to do things that are going to make me feel good about myself. Just making more money is going to make me feel good. (laughs) Okay. Working out is going to make me feel good. Mm -hmm. Having a drink or two, not too much. Um, what else? And like I, I, I do the crying, but I, I feel like I, I don't do it in front of people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like if anything, out of me and you, like I think I'm more emotional sometimes. You don't think so? I, I don't, don't even know. know the last. I don't. Whatever. I honestly haven't seen you in an emotional state in a long time. Really. Valid. Vitty, vitty, Re- really, <laughs> no, really, <laughs> yeah, really. Um, um, no, I think I. Well, I, not that I don't think that you've been, you've had mm-hmm. your moments. I just think that you you do a really great job at masking it, and it's like mm-hmm. obviously I can tell, and the only way, the only reason I'm saying that I can tell is because you bury yourself in the work that you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm crying. <laughs> I'm fucking crying because I 
have like my I don't know like I like brush things off and not take things personal but when it gets to a point where it's just like you can't do the brush off and it's like literally bottled up inside to the point where it's like I can't like breathe I'm gonna cry mm-hmm. yeah there was one time I tried to go to sleep because I was like if I don't go to sleep like I'm gonna cry like I'm 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 talking too much to myself like I'm you know I'm I'm just holding too much emotion inside right now and I was like I'm just gonna go to sleep because if not I'm if I open my mouth to actually like breathe I'm going to cry like yeah. if I say a word I'm going to cry and it's like mm. I don't want to cry because the the one thing I hate is to be asked why am I crying mm. because it's gonna make me cry more mm. um but I went went to go to sleep and instead of me like going to sleep, I fucking bawled out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, this was the opposite of what I wanted to do because I know that once I start, I'm not going to stop. But I'm okay with crying because I think for me that I don't cry on, on a daily basis. So after you cry, sometimes you really do feel better. Yeah. And so, and honestly, crying could literally be better than talking. Sometimes masks are a little bit don't more, don't more come with the whole more emotional. more emotional shit because in all actuality, if you think about it, some are just hard all the time, and and you think I'm not saying you in particular, but yeah, there are some that can be emotional, but it's like we're all we're all within our emotions, like we're all women. Come on, we all we just handle it differently, and some were taught and and you know were in spaces where they were able to be that vulnerable so they are on a regular basis and then there's people like me and you who can't even do that and are scared half the time to do it in front of each other mm -hmm. like how often in the last three years that we've been together how often have you seen me cry well well i just think that's that's how you are as a person and like that comes from also like how you were raised in your family yeah, Valid, never, but nobody. I mean, your mom. Of course, I've seen I've seen her cry. But like, your family's not too emotional. Mm -mm. You know. Mm hmm. So I just thought that's what what you know why you weren't that I, that as I'm emotional. Not, yeah. No. I mean, I'm not <laughs> regularly emotional. So uh, like a lot of people can't say that unless they're my family. A lot of people can't say that they've saw me cry. If you're not in my immediate family, you can't say that I've saw her cry so many times. No, it has to be a handful of times and it either has to be that I'm truly hurt or I'm really mad. Mm -hmm. But but I also don't feel like I'm in a position to where I should hide that from you because, yeah, you know, I'm vulnerable with you on multiple levels as my partner. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm gonna, even though sometimes I don't want to. Um, there's going to be moments where I can't hide those yeah. things from you. But, yeah, we all process differently. The third thing I wrote here is you will lose friends. Um, I think that people always pick a side. I don't know why. And, I mean, in queer relationships, like I said before, you guys start commingling your friends. And people pick sides. People unfollow. It's like a thing. Yeah. A big thing. Not only are they picking sides, but I feel like when you get in relationships too, you kind of fall back off your friend groups because you're so involved and indulged mm -hmm. in your relationship that you neglect your social group, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that that's another way where you kind of lose friends. Some, un you know, mm -hmm. some friends don't take it personal and they understand it like, all right, whatever, you booed up. Mm -hmm. Some take it personal. Um but sometimes you can recover that after a relationship or sometimes you don't. Yeah. The funny thing is when your friends come out and they're like, yeah, I ain't like them anyway. Yeah. Moving on. You don't need closure. Sometimes people feel like closure will help them move on because they need a reason as to why they got broken up with. Well, you don't need a reason. Because they're gonna come up with some bullshit. They're gonna Closure like, is finesse. They're at they, its finest. Yeah, like it's like they're just gonna come up with some BS. They're gonna be like, "It's not you, it's me." 
or like they're just you're gonna say something very generic and you're still gonna be confused like what do you mean what are you talking about like you're gonna want like specific scenarios and they're not gonna have specific scenarios for you and if so it's just gonna be like a like a petty argument like back and forth type of conversation it's just not worth it it's not mm -hmm. And all that that does it, it it I feel like it fumes the fire more. Mm -hmm. Like you think you're going to get clarity and you leave more confused than ever. Right. And then you're questioning you're in the process of questioning everything all over again. Mm -hmm. Like no. Yeah. Once they give you the first, you know, couple excuses and you have like the first few weeks of, you know, conversation and trying to figure it out and picking brains like don't don't go trying to get closure three months down the line because it's not worth it. Yeah, and I don't know. It's just like um, I remember in my past situation when I first started dating that girl, she was actually in the process of ending her previous relationship. She does this. She just moves from person to person. like, And I was like, okay, like that's weird, but whatever. And then they told me that like the person that they were with wanted closure and wanted to like talk in person and i just thought that that was just so weird i needed one last time to get it and i'm like and my dumbass was like i mean all right like what am i gonna say don't go over there don't go talk to her because i'm still trying to be cool <laughs> but i really was like i don't think that's necessary but and then when they went to go get when they went to go have a conversation with this person they was trying they was trying to hit on them like like physically I'm like, you see, this is why I told you not to go there. <laughs> I can't. The bullshit that you got to deal with, bro. I can't. And I, that, that should have been the first red flag for me. And that's, well, that's when I should have been like, peace. Because if you're not done with your, your old thing, I need you to figure that out first. Clearly, there's some shit going on with y'all. But yeah, I was an idiot. Um, the other thing I wrote here is some people might not understand your grieving process. Or, like, why you're grieving someone who was so, like, toxic, in quotations, because we say that word all the time now. Or someone who was so bad for you. Or someone that you didn't even date that long. Like, I feel like sometimes you try to go to your friends or family and, like, they minimize it mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Maybe they didn't like your partner. Maybe they didn't even like the idea of you being in a same-sex relationship. So they're going to, like, make it seem like... That doesn't even matter. Like, move on type shit. Yeah, it's not um, important. Right. Like, I think that people don't understand that you're grieving a lot of things. Like, you're grieving, um, like, the person you once knew because, obviously, things ended up being different at the end from the beginning, from the honeymoon phase. You're also grieving, like, what your relationship could have been. And you're grieving, like, what you imagined it to be. Um, like, if that was, like, marriage or kids and things like that. Like, things that you guys talked about in your future, those are all things that you're grieving. You're also grieving the time and energy that you poured into somebody thinking that it was going to... I, I, the, I don't, the, I don't the like moment. to grieve on that. On the time and energy. Uh -uh. The person who preaches about wasted time. Yeah, but I, I, I always say that I don't regret regret my relationship. I'm not saying it's a regret. Yeah. But you grieve it. It bothers you for a little bit. Yeah, no, but it's just like time was moving But you don't anyway. regret it. Time was moving anyway. I'm not saying that the time that you spent with the person, like, is regrettable or like, oh, I could have spent it doing something better. I don't even want to use the, like, word time because it's really not the time but just mm -hmm. like the energy and the the person i am and was open to being with you mm -hmm. it's just like i don't know i guess it kind of shoots back to the idea of like well damn that wasn't good enough mm -hmm. like my best wasn't good enough i don't know yeah but you grieve that i'm not saying like you're regretting it yeah it just it does get to a point where it's just like damn like i mean i the reason why i disagree with this is like I don't know. I feel like what wasted time if we also had good times? Like, obviously, there was bad times, but, like, you got to think about, like, the good times. And honestly, when you're going through a breakup, you're all you're thinking about is the good times. That's mm -hmm. why you're so sad because mm -hmm. you're thinking about when you guys went on vacation or when you did this or when you do that and, like, your everyday routine or, like, things, little things that maybe they did, did for you that were your, like, you know... um, 
way like your love languages and mm-hmm. how they loved you and things like that you know i mean i don't take for granted or like mm-hmm. ever regret my times like i believe that i was with, with whoever and dealing with whatever situation when i was supposed to and and that's helped my growth in who i become mm-hmm. um but again i'm not saying it is wasted time i'm just saying that is that is a something you grieve like you mm-hmm. you feel that and you're like dang like all right and like you said you in that time you're thinking about all the good times we had mm-hmm. i mean that's if you had more good times than bad mm-hmm. but um i don't know that's just something that that you feel for a little bit mm-hmm. like in that in that process of the bitterness that you feel for a while you yeah. know cuz eventually like off the rip you're gonna be missing the person and missing everything that you guys had all the good moments and all those things but then you reach a phase where you're angry Mm -hmm. and with anger becomes that the whole questioning and you start to realize like oh shit like i'm realizing signs and flags that i probably should have realized while we were in the relationship like and then you realize after and then it starts making sense like oh maybe our time had been passed Mm -hmm. like we this time was going to come, but it probably should have happened sooner. Mm-hmm. I think that's when maybe you hit a point where you're like regretting the time mm-hmm. or may almost feel like it's wasted, but I'm not saying that it's wasted. Yeah. I get you. Um, that was my last one for things they don't tell you. Do you All right. One? Well, I put out a poll. Well, not really a poll, mm-hmm. but I put out questions, you know, to – all our uh, followers on Instagram put it on our story, and we had some fire responses to which I couldn't agree more. They're not all there, but those a are good there. majority. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna start with the first one. No matter how amicable it is, someone's always end up petty, and that's valid. I agree. Valid. I green agree. flag on that. I agree. People really show their ass. It's when so the breakup ugly. happens and when, that's why when, so earlier ugly. when you were talking about oh when you know people act like they don't care that shit makes me mad because re- people really and and i guess like in my experience that comes with the people who try to distract themselves from processing well what do you that. want them to do to be on instagram live crying no <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay. I could see this going bad. Like, no, you, like I'm you, confused. No, 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 no. Okay, no, okay. No. There's one thing I got to say, though. What, when um, when I said that, I guess it was a little bit different. Like, I, whatever. But one thing that I don't agree with, though, like going through a breakup, is people who have every post and everything is like towards their like ex. It's like subs left and right and like... TikTok videos, Instagram videos, Instagram posts, like it's I mean, like what does it matter? You're not following them. Yeah, I know, but at the same time, it's like you're give you're it's like you're giving them too much like if they're probably stalking your page, like this girl keep talking about me. You know, I don't know. It's just you can't give people too much attention. So sometimes I'm like that where I'm like, I'm not posting a damn thing. Maybe I'll post one or two, but it's I'm not gonna be posting you mm-hmm. all the time about you all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, in my experience, I worked with the person. So oh my God. It, I was like face to face, personal, personal. Like, yeah. So that seeing that in person and dealing with that in mm-hmm. person, oh, that worst. it, yeah, that when I speak mm-hmm. on that shit, that's when I'm just like, wow, you are, I can't believe it. Mm-hmm. Like you really can't like this, the, the motherfucker assholes. who was really out here uh-huh. telling me they love me. Like, how could uh-huh. you love me, but treat me with this type of respect? Yeah. Like zero respect. Like zero. I, I don't know what happens when the title is gone and you decide you're no longer together. The fucking respect goes out the window too. They're just but rude. it's just crazy They're to just me. Rude. It's just like okay, uh-huh. so just because you decided we're not together, I'm all of a sudden a stranger. I'm all yeah. of a sudden a different person. Like right. you don't care can't at the fact say, that you you were laying me. in bed with me the night before. Can't even say excuse me. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, no. I don't. I with dated that. like three people that I work with, and every time that shit ended after work, it was like I mean after like the breakup work was just like tension like yeah. somebody had to leave no nah, i don't fuck with that so yeah people really do show their ass after you know um breakups uh another one said the detachment is real shit or realizing the person you were with wow let me read that shit again <laughs> nobody tells you that the detachment is real or realizing the person you was with was not the one you thought 
like who you thought they were. Mm-hmm. And that I think that goes along with the, them being petty and showing their ass after because you really see the type of person that they are. And people are really different. They're not just because they present as such, be, you know, in the relationship that. Yeah. Outside of a relationship, people are crazy. Um, nobody tells you block their contact because you really are going through chemical withdrawal. No, I'm no, yeah, I'm a big well, at least like mute them, but I'm a big unfollow. At least I'm unfollowing. She's you. blocking. No, 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 I, I don't block people, they block me, but I'm unfollowing. <laughs> I leave my page, um. On public, so everybody oh, yeah, can see. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. And I'm not blocking you either. <laughs> uh-uh. No. Maybe I'll block your number, but um, that part. social media, unfollow them. Like, you don't got to see their stuff. And if you don't feel like I'm following them, mute them everywhere. Just mute them. Oh, I'm unfollowing because I can't. I will. I will. I can't keep following. <laughs> if we're not on good terms, I'm not going to keep following because, like, somebody going to get their feelings hurt. What's the point? Um, Nobody tells you... People's true colors come out when you break up. I had to learn about this new personality my ex had. Yup. New personality. Yup. Yes. Um, nobody tells you don't fall for their I miss you text because I'm going to do the same shit over again. Valid. That's why you got to block them. When they say I miss you, it, they just trying to see what you're doing, what you're up to, who you fucking with, if you are even entertaining anybody, because they clearly don't really want you to entertain anybody. And then they'll come through, soften you up, and, you know, get a little some, some love in, and then be on their way. Mm-hmm. And then you're stuck feeling the, worse than the first time. Mm-hmm. Mm. Next. Nobody tells you feelings... Oh, feeling the feelings and the longing of the idea of the person, not numbing. That's literally what we said. Like, um, yeah. feel it out. Yeah. Oh, he's crying. No one tells you how it'll ruin everything you loved before, especially things you did together. Facts. So tragic. Nobody tells you people get nasty real quick over something as small as a towel. <laughs> LOL. Yo, this is like a common thing. Must be like a queer relationship shit. What? The pettiness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, people really, I'm telling you, people really show they ass. I don't, I don't, that shit made me tight. So tight. Because like, I've said this before, but you dated this, you had a whole relationship with this person. So for you to act like they just, you know, don't exist, has shows zero for respect, talking shit on them in that relationship. It's just like, you look dumb. Nah, You're embarrassing yourself because talking shit. that was your, right. Because that was the person that you spent all that time with. And that was the person that you look like. I just don't get that. Mm-hmm. Um, nobody tells you, you find, you'll find out the person's true colors after the breakup. Oh, this is a, this is a series. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, I didn't read these. Well, I read them at a the time, but these ones I didn't. Um, nobody tells you your heart breaks to the point that you can't breathe. Oh my God. Preach. Preach. It really be like that. I can breathe now. Um, nobody tells you even if you break up from a toxic relationship, it doesn't feel like relief. You're still broken. Yeah. Nobody tells you you can still care for the person even though they broke your heart. I taught uh I could oh I thought I could hate them but I can't. That honestly makes you more mad at the fact that you low key not hate them like you low key want to dislike them but you just can't. Mm-hmm. Like so then you hate yourself because you're like I hate the fact that I don't dislike you that I still love you, mm-hmm. you know. Um nobody tells you that loving someone is easy. The hard part is that person loving themselves valid you can't love someone who don't love themselves that shit is rough rough um nobody tells you how much you depend on the other person with practical stuff like driving you somewhere okay diva okay, okay. passenger princess right shit. no but the little things do go a long way God bless. nobody tells you learning Nobody tells you learning how to let go, giving space and respecting boundaries, having self-respect. Okay. That's facts. Nobody tells you the complete and total readjustment to not having that person in your life anymore. 
days that use days that used to resolve around a joint routine changes into a solo routine. It's jarring at first. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So to kind of end it off before we go into the family meeting, I want to go like over um like what to do if you're if you are going through a breakup. Okay. Number one, I'm a big fan of like booking a trip somewhere. I don't care if you're going to Miami Beach, like you gotta get away. Go somewhere. Even if it's like driving distance, go somewhere to kind of just like Oh, you got money now? Uh nobody said I got money. <laughs> Put that shit on your credit <laughs> card. <laughs> No, no, no facts. But um, yeah, book a trip somewhere. Like on, just you ain't even gotta take away. a plane. Like just a hour drive here, or there. Like you mm-hmm. know, stay at a friend's house for a weekend. I don't know, go visit somebody who's out of state. Yeah, just a just a away from a little your quick getaway. Yeah, like getting away from your like regular environment. You know mm-hmm. where you because essentially when you break up with people like you're it's usually either you're in a shared space with them right. or like you're just in familiar a familiar environment of where you spent time with them you know right. so it's like you need to you need to remove yourself from those environments mm-hmm. to just like regather basically mm-hmm. so to say yeah um the other thing that i could think about is um like if you're living with the person Clearly, you got to, like, move out or, like, figure out, like, what's going to, where you're going to live if you can't live with family. I would say, I think living alone is a luxury, number one. Like, even people who make 60K can't live alone, at least not here in Jer- in Jersey, right? Would- uh, maybe you could get, get a studio or something, but I feel like being alone during a breakup is really hard. And... Like, I remember, like, one of my first breakups when I was in college. Like, at least I had roommates. So, it was like, they would, like, if I was if I was feeling down or anything, like, I could just go outside, get out of my room, go to their room, and kind of just, like, distract myself. And, like, we'll do something or, like, go out, do something. And I feel like sometimes it is hard to live with roommates. But if you could find someone that you can get along with and you guys have a good time, like... It's okay to like find a roommate because the thing about being alone is that I don't, it'd it be so like, it'd it be extra lonely. Like if you going through a breakup and you live alone, just extra lonely. Mm-hmm. I can't describe it. And you just get into bad habits where you don't want to leave the house or you're just like drinking all the time or you're like doing something that you know isn't good for you, but there's nobody there to kind of like check you like, girl, let's go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. What do you think about when you're going through a breakup? Like, what do you do? Um, Kind of the same. Mm-hmm. Just, like, reconnecting with people maybe that I hadn't spent my time with because I was in a relationship. Um, family, mostly, mm-hmm. usually. I kind of just... Not, not that I'm not around my family, but, like, you kind of... I don't know, have more time to right. spend with family. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think spending time by yourself is necessary because depending on the length of your relationship, all you know is who you are with that person, like with someone there. So it's like now when you're in a space where you don't have that accessibility or like that person not even that person but like a person there with you 24 7 yeah especially when you live together like you don't have that bond or that relationship and that person to turn to fall into and stuff so it's like you have to reacclimate to like just i guess so to say being independent like just having yeah. yourself yeah i guess for me it's different because like i've done like i've lived by myself before mm-hmm. so i kind of know what it's like to kind of just be alone and not be in a relationship but yeah, and if you get a dog, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. honestly, you baby. need a little bit of love, and you get yourself a, a furry baby. They'll keep you busy <laughs> for sure, and they'll give you so much love. They're the most precious things in the world. Yeah, and you get compliments on them all the time. I love my babies, <laughs> but um, another thing I would say is um, we have a breakup playlist. Well, I'm I'm gonna try to find the link somewhere, but 
definitely make like a breakup playlist and like a feel good playlist because like when you're in your feels like just play one of those and you're in in the car blasting that driving on the highway yeah you'll be good okay <laughs> cut or miss you're either crying or you're like yeah either w- w- yeah. which which with whichever i'm one. definitely making a playlist because one thing about me i'm running to music all the time who the time. um who like what song or what artist do you listen to if you're like chris what? brown georgia smith um going her a breakup? her um yeah, girl. Okay. What you saying? Chris Brown got some some soppy songs in there. Really? Yeah, I'll listen to the soppy and the sexy. You don't like really. You don't listen to Chris Brown. You know I, I know don't. I don't. You know I, mean, I don't. I know you don't. <laughs> I got me. I my just Chris never Brown think tickets. of like. No, I be listening to some Jesse sad Reyes. Shit. I'm big on lyrics, so it's like I like meaningful shit. Like I want to feel shit. So I would say that a good majority of my music is either sad like talking about lost love Mm -hmm. or singing about love you know i like my sexy shit too but like usually it's like the love and and missed love that i listen to majority of the time Mm. so yeah i know i'll be i'll be the happiest person in the world singing the saddest song in the world and i'll sing it like i'm feeling it in that moment (laughs) That's just, I love that shit. But yeah, I would say Jesse Reyes. Um, like I said, her, some of Chris Brown, Georgia Smith. Georgia Smith's last album did love it. Her. Did it. Love her. Um, a little bit of Sam Smith. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I have so many, but I will that's probably deep in the rotation right now. Yeah. Who you listen to? Other than podcasts. <laughs> Because that's really all I hear or listen to, unless we in the car. Yeah. And even in the car, she'll play a podcast. And, like, that's cool. You just like to listen to people talk and Uh chat and, you know. Because I feel like we're listening to a podcast, you don't feel alone. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Like, not that I... It's just, like, you feel like... You kind of feel like you're in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I learn a lot. Like, they be keeping me up to date with shit, you know? Yep. Um, I feel like for my sad playlist... I do like Georgia Smith. Like, that's my top one. Um, who else? You know, I like to listen to Harry Styles when I'm sad. Interesting. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. What? I'm not thinking, any- <laughs> I'm not thinking anything. And, like, know, Harry just- Styles isn't even sad, but I don't know what it is, bro. I don't know what it is. Who else? Um, Butterman and Sugar. Ha. Huh. <laughs> not that. Not that bullshit. Not that okay. song. Um, who else? I can't think right now, but it's in the it's in our breakup playlist somewhere. Oh, all right. Well, mm-hmm. let me know when you make a playlist and share one with me because I'm still waiting. I shared you my playlist a while ago. What playlist? Is I use Spotify. She use Apple. It's just okay. Too, that's the problem here. No, I got access to your to your Spotify. You make a playlist. Oh, I'm really? gonna listen to it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. What else do you recommend? Therapy. That's big. Like, therapy is literally going to be your best friend. Because your friends are going to be tired of, like... Mm -mm, Listening to the shenanigans. Listening to your drama, honestly. And I don't know. I feel like a therapist really helps you through the process and kind of helps you, um, access you to, like, the right questions. That way, when you go into your next relationship, um, you're more confident in, like, who you are. It's like like food for thought. Almost. Yeah, and I feel like people who like go through breakups a lot, when they don't go to therapy, it kind of makes them a little bit more insecure mm-hmm. because they are thinking that they're gonna get broken up with again. Not even that they're gonna get broken up mm-hmm. with. What I thought about in saying that is like you go into the next relationship or like situationship trying to be the person you weren't in the last relationship, thinking that it that you weren't good enough. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah. you're like, oh, let me not do that. You know, because clearly I got broken up with and those were the examples that they gave me. So let me not be that person or let me not do those things in this relationship Mm -hmm. and maybe like we'll be solid. Yeah. You know, Um, so, I mean, I haven't had therapy, not saying that, you know, I don't plan on trying it. Um, I just think it's it can be hard to find a therapist and like a place that works for you. Um, But 
one day at a time. Um, but with like therapy, as she was saying, like kind of just like your, your mental and physical health, whether that being, I hate to constantly bring up working out, but I feel like that's always like the example you want to work out, but don't work out to it with the idea of like, I want to look better so they can see me looking better. Like, no, do it for you and do it in the way you want to, in the way that you're comfortable with. Do activities that you used to do before the relationship that you stopped doing because you were in the relationship. You know, I just feel like when you get out of this relationship, you're obviously a different person now, right? You're transitioning. You're you're like growing out of that skin that you had in that relationship. And now you have to find your own personal identity again. And I feel like in growing and finding this new version of you, you also have to take some of the old version of you that you have. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you have to like you know, kind of get back into activities that you used to do before you got into that relationship. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we change, you know, we phase out of versions of ourselves, the before, the during, and the after. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do think, like, remembering things that you used to admire and enjoy before and finding a way to, like, apply that in the after is, it's imperative. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, like, if you're not into, like, the whole working out thing, I do feel like you try to, you you should try to get into like a hobby mm-hmm. whatever that is yeah but like that could be like ac- physical activity doesn't have to be like the lifting the running you know no, it could it be doesn't. the swimming it could be the you know hot, bowling golfing yeah. skating basketball soccer like just group activities um some of them aren't even groups if you don't want to be with groups you mm-hmm. know you got art classes um what is that that we did the clay pottery thing. Mm-hmm. Like there are so many different things that you could do that doesn't involve actual like working yeah. out, so to say, but like it's a different type of physical activity. Yeah, I agree. But that's it for our, um, what you didn't know or what nobody told us about breakups. Um, I'm going to hop into this family meeting question. I was with my ex-partner for two years and we recently broke up due to her being tired. A few nights ago, she asked to meet up and discuss the breakup, and she stated she's giving her life to God, and she doesn't feel right being gay anymore. I need advice on how to move. I am completely heartbroken and feel blindsided. Yikes. I have no words. I mean, I could see how that's definitely a blindside if, like, it had never been brought up, like, religion had been brought up in the relationship. Um... But yeah, that's a lot. That's a hard pill to swallow. I don't I don't even know what to say to that. Maybe this episode will help them. I hope. I hope. I would hope. Um, if not, I am very much wishing you the best. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, religion is a whole nother thing. Yeah. People be hypnotized. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> um next family meeting question call me delusional but i'm so determined to meet my future wife i looked up the top cities who have a lot of poc and queer community and had my friend write them down for me to pull out of a bag i pulled out manchester uk i'm so nervous and this is also my first solo trip i just booked the tickets and airbnb i leave next month wow that first of all that is bold that is bold why didn't a friend go with you what wait i'm all down for taking a trip and i could take one solo if i know that where i'm going i'm you know i have somebody there i'm meeting somebody there but ooh, straight up solo dolo good for you i i hope it all goes great exactly how you expect it and i hope it is you're safe I want to know, is this person from from the United States going to the UK or are they already like in the area? I don't know. Because that would be wild. Like you're going internationally. You didn't have to do that because you could go to New York City. (laughs) Any city, any city, Los Angeles, no sé. Any big city has a lot of gay people. I don't know for a fact, but I just know that obviously in a city there's just more people, you know? But oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I wish you I mean, the that's best. definitely a different way of doing it. No, I I'm I'm expecting her to come back with a wife. Yeah. I mean, it's the it's the straight up going out. She said, "Forget about the online dating. I'm putting myself out there out there." 
Right. And you know what? I respect that. That's and I crazy. hope that, that it does go well. That is very you, nuts. You hit us back up and let us know how that trip went. Yeah, and I need to know where you're where you were coming from. And I'm not calling you delusional, but that is very bold. I don't think it's delusional. No, 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 no. No, not listen, if you're you're going out there, I mean, obviously I would hope it's you're not going with the intentions to find a wife. Like sure. No, she definitely is. She sure her back. you're gonna go experience the community elsewhere because clearly it's not doing you any justice where you are. Um, but yeah, don't, you know, have fun, like do it for you and be safe. Yes. Very much so. Oh my God. That's exciting though. Yeah. That means, that means that won't, you know, this trip that we take with Trover trip, you know, stay tuned. You got to come with us. Clearly you'll be outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but that's it for our 100th episode, y'all. It's did and it's done, and we did that, and we thank you for doing it with us. Yes. Thank you so much for listening. Burr, 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 burr. Don't, Don't forget, forget to- February 26th, catch us out in Jersey City. Come see us. Celebrate with us. You know, let us show you the love that you've been showing us um, when you come out and meet us at Porta. Yeah, Porta. Like, share, and subscribe. Deuce, deuce, mother goose. Bye.